art can change our future. Travel with me, artist John Dyer and artist Joanne Short. Be inspired by endangered environments, plants and animals, and learn about tribal culture. Paint, connect, exhibit and change. It's a last chance to paint. So today, we've been really lucky. We're going to walk to school with this lovely little boy and the family have agreed that they will let us walk with him. Just to show you the sort of walk they do, we'll ask him some questions. And it's um, just so that you have an insight into around here, what, how far the children walk and what they have to encounter sometimes. So we're on our way to school and Vincent is obviously very used to getting to school swiftly. He's walking quite quickly, so we're rushing to keep up with him, but he obviously knows his, well, his way very well indeed. So he's on a mission. So here, here we have some really quite big trees and the reason why there's so much, so much green here is that this is another water catchment area. So here comes Vincent on his walk to school. He normally do this on his own or just with a friend. We're here with the Born Free team and his teachers today. Vincent, do you enjoy walking to school? Do you enjoy this lovely walk to school? Yes. It's and very fun because to the school in this forest. And how long does it take you? you? You have to walk to school and walk back. How long does this walk normally take when I'm not here uh, intruding? 20 minutes. So Vincent's got a 20 minute walk through this sort of wild landscape. Some children will be walking seven kilometers to school and back again. There's quite a crossing here. Gosh, this is actually really unstable. This is made of, I don't know what this is. This is palm, palm tree. It's a bridge, but it's, it's barely a bridge. So this here is the first bit of proper flowing water that I've seen, probably since we've been here in Kenya, to be fair. And all this is because they put a piece of land to one side, which they don't farm. So then the, the, the farming doesn't take away all the water. And then they can take the water to their farms as and when they need it and carefully in pipes. And they've been taught how to do this to try and help make a living from their farms properly. Teacher Anne and Mr. Kirimi from the school. I am Rasita, grade six, and I have about uh, 50 pupils. And now I've got left behind and I don't know where anyone is and there could be a lion anywhere. So do you ever encounter any wildlife on your way to school? Inside the school, they have the baboo. They used to disturb the children the so much, the, the big baboon, the big monkeys. They used to disturb the, the children. They take their food, they are, they are running after them. There are so many, I think you can, I, I wish you can just go there and you'll find them, so many of them in the okay. school compound. Which animal would be your favourite animal? Elephants. Do you walk to school? And if so, how far do you walk? Uh, five, around five, five kilometres. So I've suggested we pick up the pace on this walk to school because we're getting really late. Um, and Vincent can walk really fast. He's 13 years old. What do you like doing during your free time? Like playing the football. And when I was in home, I am going with the goats. Do you have a favorite football team? Yes. Is the Kenya Manchester? He loves Manchester. Ah, Manchester United. Yes. Very cool. We are almost some 200 meters to the school. <laughs> and here we have Martin, who's not walking to school. He's just driving. I'll, I'll be following you. <laughs> he's keeping guard. He's driving to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So, so where did where did you go to school? Kajo Primary School. And that where is that? Uh, around 15 kilometers from Murera. So, and it's the other side of the park. Yeah. The other and side. there are animals the other side of the park too. 
Yeah, yeah. encountered like elephants, buffaloes, and also crocodiles wow. along the rivers. And how far did you walk to school? Five kilometers from home. And used to go in a group with other children? Yeah, we used to go with a group of villagers, yeah, yeah, people yeah. from the village. Yeah, we, we are now at the school gate and things are now will join the others and already we can see the young ones are also getting in. These are four year old, five year old now joining the school. This is our school where we visit today. The, the children went there over the weekend and they found uh, something like a rhino within the compound. So we're in the school playground and we have a baboon literally just outside just outside the classroom. The, the buffaloes, they, they come very near to the school even when the children are around the school. So we have to, sometimes even we call the game to come and, and chase them away. So look how the children are concentrating and enjoying doing their drawings. We've brought some desks outside because there isn't a classroom big enough and we brought the desks and the paint and the paper and they were just so keen to get started. They look fantastic and they're just concentrating so hard and I think children all around the world when they're given a paintbrush and some paint, I think this is what happens. I think children learn and they enjoy creating. So, Mama Vincent, um, do the kids have homework uh, in the evening? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So they do have homework in the evening. Uh, do you have light for the for your boy to do homework in the evening? They use a touch. Do, the, does Vincent have a desk? Does he have uh, the right books to use for his homework? No, your book one. No, we have with the idea. And so he just uses the the facilities you find around. So he would be doing his homework around, out right there. Yeah, because he doesn't have a desk inside. So here, these they're doing really well. Look, this little girl's putting an elephant in. She's done the lovely tree next to it. Look, this is the tree, and now she's putting in the elephant. And then we've got the house. This is house or the school. Your house? House, your house, yeah? You've done your tree, you're just starting to get going. Look, we've got a buffalo here. It's amazing. That's fantastic. Look, we've got a lion over here. Look, with big mane. So, have you ever seen a lion outside the park? Yes. Yes. Okay. What do, What does Vincent have for breakfast in the morning? Okay, there is a time if the he takes breakfast at home. If there is anything handyable, he will eat. But if there is nothing, he'll just go to school. Does the school provide lunch for Vincent and his other friends? Did we run school lunch in? Uh, there is a, sometimes the school provide lunch, other days they don't provide, so they usually uh, carry from home to school if there is any food. If there is nothing, they'll just spend the day they haven't eaten. Gosh, so that must be very challenging for Vincent. So potentially today he has had no breakfast and potentially no lunch. So in terms of learning, that's a challenge. Um, but there is food sometimes, but it's obviously not, not guaranteed. Uh, behind me is the school kitchen, which caters for approximately 450 students, including the teachers. 
Okay. This is the kitchen. It is used by this school to prepare food for the children. And here is the firewood. They act as a fuel to facilitate the cooking of the food. As a bone free, we have been planting trees in this school to make sure that one, we mitigate the effects of climate change and then to, uh, to add more forest cover. And then kids here, they come, they carry with them firewoods from home. But to reduce these or to, to ease this burden to the kids, these trees which we plant, at, uh, after some time they grow. And after pruning, the school will have a sustainable fuel for cooking. So another question from a school is, what has been my favourite animal to paint? That's really tricky. So I've had to paint an elephant in front of a class of children. And I don't really know what elephants look like. So I have to kind of really drag this out of my brain. And today I had to paint a giraffe um, as well. So they're lovely to paint. But, but again, I think the challenge of those two northern white rhino is always going to be a memory for me. So I'm going to go northern white rhino. We're going over here to the head teacher who's been engrossed in his own painting. It's, I think, an inspiration for the children because it shows that they're not the only ones working hard and he's really, really enjoying it. I'm going to go and talk to him. So, hello. What have you painted here? I painted the landscape. There's some ridges, a vulture, scavengers, one of the scavengers, an antelope, and an acacia tree and also some bunch on the sky flying looking for food. And have, have you painted before? Yeah, I've been uh, painting even when I was in primary school. Uh, yeah. And you like painting, I can see. I love painting. Yeah. It's my best hobby. And it, it's really good for the children to see that you're doing this. It yeah. is able to paint. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Here we've got a really good elephant just here. Just doing a little person to go with it. There's a tree. That's really nice. So look, look what they're, they're achieving with so little. They're, the children will get some, some food for lunchtime. That's great. Some of them haven't got very much at home, but the, the school is looking after them. They're really enjoying their painting. Look how well behaved they are. Look how happy they are. It's, it's great to be here and enjoy this with them. So we have a question from South Petherwind School in the UK and it's how to say lion. So how you say the word lion in the Ma language? The Ma language is the language spoken by the Maasai. You say ormgatun, ormgatun, or simply use the Swahili word Simba, like in Lion King. So we've been asked, what is our favorite thing about our trip to Kenya? Well, how do I start? I don't know where to start because there's been so many good things. I've enjoyed meeting these fantastic children and learning about their lives. The Maasai children also learning about how they, they live. And just generally being here in Kenya, it's, it's so surprising. Talking about these people, about how they live with their animals, that's really important because, you know, we don't walk down the street and come up with an elephant, do we? We don't bump into an elephant. Whereas these people have to cope with that all the time and that's been amazing. So being here with the lovely Phoebe and being driven by Martin, we've just had the best time. We've learned so much. We are in Maru National Park now. Look at the colour of the soil, it's amazing. And Joe's just taking some photographs of some giraffes. And we're looking for lions with, with the lion team from Born Free. And they can track and they keep um, data on all the lions. So they're fairly confident we might get to see one of their prides. So we've just seen a warthog and a beautiful, amazing creature. And I've got a fun fact. Uh, I think it was about warthog. I can't remember the fun fact. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The fun fact is the warthog is the most forgetful animal. It literally can't remember. It's just being sort of chased by something and then stops and eats. That's why, that's my fun fact, I think. <laughs> this lion's really close to us. We sit panting in the heat. It's a very hot day here.
So Joe, what, what was that like seeing these lions? Incredible, it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we see some more now, please? <laughs> <laughs> So over the last seven years, the population of lions has gone from about 30 up to about 84. Some of that is through the, the lions having baby cubs, baby lions, and there are several baby lions at the moment in the prides around Maru. And other lions are moved in where they've been mistreated or they've been rehomed into Maru. Those lions tend to do less well than the lions that are born naturally here and learn how to hunt. Um, and the lions that come in tend to cause more uh, animal-human conflict. But the good news is we've gone from 30 to 84 lions in Maru. And this is a great story because we need these top apex predators to keep the whole ecosystem in balance. Do check out our previous expeditions from the Yawanawa tribe in the Amazon rainforest and the Penan tribe and the orangutan in Borneo. And we will be back with you with a new expedition that's going to be coming up in the next 12 months. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for following. Do lots of art, send it into the World Gallery and let's celebrate our beautiful world and make it a better place together. Bye bye Kenya. Bye bye.